question that a lot of people have for me in the operatic world is what do I use for warm-ups and how do I how do I get ready to sing and uh, to be honest uh, it, it changes daily but uh, because a lot of people don't realize how how flexible you need to be as a singer and, and and how in tune with your own instrument that you need to be in order to be a good singer uh, uh, because if you have one technique and one way of singing at all times, uh, it, it can become very rigid and your body changes constantly and depending on blood flow, depending on your mood and depending on how, how awake you are. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize that you need to be awake when you're trying to attempt to sing <laughs> a lot of these things. And what I mean by that, you need to have really proper good blood flow. Uh, and, uh, some some breathing techniques are, are really really wonderful. Um, what I like to do is uh, is to take out my stopwatch on my phone and and to to really do some training, breathing training, such as uh, seeing how long you can hold a note out. Uh, and it's one of the best ways to to basically get in control of your instrument is by just taking it's the most simple thing in the world. Take out your stopwatch on your phone and see how long you can just. <laughs> see how long you can hold a note a single note and how to properly uh, produce this this beautiful sound that'll help get the blood flowing and everything awake and another another uh, um, wonderful way that I like to warm up and for years I did this daily but now it's it's, it's changed but but a lot of people know about Lamperti and uh, Vakai in the in the uh, uh, classical music world uh, but one uh, person who everyone has heard of, Rossini, wrote the best exercises that I've found, uh, to be honest, and they're uh, Rossini's Solfeggi Gorgheggi. You can find these easily on uh, IMSLP and other places, but uh, some of the fun things that they do, like one of, one of my favorites is, uh, uh, so going, ah, uh, ah, uh, sing these in many different ways by going, you know, keeping it light, ah, 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 or you can use full voice, ah, 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 ah. Uh, that's just one example, but the interesting thing about, uh, about him is that through these exercises, uh, he basically knew the voice better than anyone ever has, and he knew its shortcomings. He knew that there are certain patterns that the voice can do much easier than others. And some of the hardest uh, things are triplets and sextuplets for, for singers um, because you have to control, you feel like you have to control every note. So like one of the, one of the exercises is number two in, in the Sofeji Gorgheji, in the Gorgheji part, um, is um, is controlled every single note and that's kind of boring and not melodic whatsoever but so if you find yourself uh, stuck on triplets one of the best ways is to remember that that triplets uh, are slightly unnatural so you need to do something unnatural uh, to counteract that by by stressing usually the first note like the, the last two of the triplet can be a reaction going going back because you put the pressure in and then it, and, and you have enough uh, sound and pressure to, to go on with the triplet. But the other really hard one um, is, you know, a sextuplet one, like, or, or you have number, number eight, that one's difficult. So you have to control every single note. But if you do it faster, it's might seem boring but after you do them for a while uh, you start to notice that every repertoire no matter what if you're doing Puccini, Wagner, Rossini, uh, any of the uh, Baroque composers you know but any anything in all of music if you will do these uh, it doesn't matter if it's for rock or <laughs> any any genre that you're going into uh, once you learn these uh, these exercises you will be in almost total control of your instrument. It'll take a long time. I mean, it took me 
a good year and a half of doing these every single day to being able to kind of master these and still they're they're difficult but uh and the trick is to do everything that's written the way that it says not just kind of flubbing through things like like mm, ah, 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 <laughs> going ah, 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 and then once you really master it's ah, 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 Anyone who says that uh, uh, these kind of uh, techniques and things are well, I'm a big Wagnerian singer, and I don't, I, I don't do coloratura. Um, I, I always try to remind them. There's a great quote by Maria Callas that said that if you're a singer and you say you don't color, you don't do coloratura. Um, that's just the same as a pianist saying, no, nope, I, only, I, I, only, I only play chords. I don't, I, I don't play uh, individual notes and scales. I just do chords. Uh, it's just a fallacy and everyone needs to be, everyone needs to be uh, um, learning coloratura, whether you use it in your repertoire or not, because it will help you be flexible in your voice. And yeah, the Solfeggio Gorgheggi is just absolutely the best, uh, the best thing. But one of my other favorite ones uh, is Mozart actually wrote uh, um, a uh, treaty on, on vocal uh, uh, exercises and I, I got a, a really fun little octave uh, uh, exercise from him that I, I like to do to, to really challenge yourself. So like, ah, 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 and if you can do that, It's, uh, there, there's many, many different ways, but that's one of the funnest ones to, uh, for, for me to do. Uh, so it's, uh, it just goes, then octave, so, yeah, <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs>